relationships, you need to be seen as a team player and a collaborator. So, and that doesn't come very easily in today's era where everyone's so glued to their devices and are pretty much independent. So building relationships is a very hard um, skill unless honed in well. And the third thing is, I forget, let me just recap that. So one is to have a mentor and uh, the second is to build relationships. And the third one is to find a problem at your workplace outside of your job description that you can solve. So, for example, at my workplace right now, everyone's like stretched. We are in Zoom meetings. Um, People feel the fatigue of managing their family and their work from home. And people Mm -hmm. don't have time for voluntary activities. I picked up this book over the weekend. It's called Who Not How. It's about how to increase your performance tenfold by delegating the things you don't have to do. And I read that book and I offered it at a team meeting. I'm like, I read this book. I'm going to share what I learned from it in an email to you. Nobody asked me to do that. But I suddenly bring in more value than I have to. And you get noticed when you start doing things like this. So add value, find a problem that you can solve, um, build relationships and get a mentor. Yeah, I I totally agree with you on those things that you're saying, because one way, especially in that relationship thing right now, where there's so many people who are so overwhelmed with, as you said, all of those things, multitasking, having family at home all the time, not even able to escape during the commute to work, trying to manage online everything, including tutoring and just the overwhelm of, of the world itself, when you are mm-hmm. the person who is either the mentor or the person who is making sure that the shyest person uh, gets paid attention to or is noticed or a person who might be depressed, and just to bring something forward where you're helping someone solve a problem that they might not have recognized that they had is really mm-hmm. cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the point, Anu, that's, that really stood out for me with what you just said about finding the value, the way you brought that book, you know, you read the book, you were going to read, and, and then you shared it with people. I think a lot of times we feel like we should get something in return, you know, but you really mm-hmm. positioned this, you know, with when I say without a lot of effort, I mean, it was thought through, but really positioned this as a way to bring value. That really, really, really incredible. I, I love that so much. Um, I know you're a Toastmaster. You're in good company. Valda and I are both Toastmasters. And oh, wow. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's really exciting. I'd share with our listeners, especially the women who may be working to find their voice. We talked about the storytelling, but what do you? What have you found to be the benefits of being a member of Toastmasters International? I think it's a great way to build a network of like-minded people. A lot of people at Toastmasters are achievers. They, they're there to achieve something in life. They're, they have ambition. So if you join Toastmasters, you get the benefit of meeting people who are on a journey. You can learn from them. You can network. I've built a lot of friendships over the years through Toastmasters. I know Rochelle through Toastmasters. We've mm-hmm. collaborated together on, a, on my podcast. There are a lot and a lot of benefits that you can build out of it. But not just like, like you said a minute ago, it's not about what you get. It's also about what you give. The more you contribute, and Toastmasters is such a big organization, there are so many ways in which you can contribute and you know, bring your skills into play. It, it, there are so many ways to, agree and have, to grow. And, and I've seen so many people become such good leaders in their organizations because of Toastmasters. Hmm. Well, that's really great. And I am just so glad that being a member of Toastmasters, learning the next set of skills as a storyteller has brought you to this place where you are making life better for others by letting the everyday people know how important they are. And have you had a lot of feedback on that for people who are thinking, well, what I do is just not important. I mean, what you do is important. Yeah, I mean, if you're, are you asking me the feedback on the podcast? Yes. Right. I've got a lot of very positive feedback. Um, in fact, if I go back to the point on making or building relationships, the podcast helped me in 2020. The podcast helped me to build relationships virtually with a lot of people. A friend put it this way. You're going places without having to step out of your house. Mm-hmm. So I build a lot of connections. And because it, it's, it's a podcast to promote their work, people are really happy. It's like a service provided to them. 
it's been of great use and a lot of people have uh, shown appreciation. They have supported my work. Uh, some some really good friends have come forward with constructive criticism on how to make it better. Uh, so it's been good. I know you know this podcast is about com- is committed to elevating the next generation of women in leadership. And when you look at what's going on for women in leadership, what would you say, especially given your international perspective? Is there enough being done? Where where might be there? Where are there some gaps in leadership, or where we can get better? Um, I think I think there's always room for improvement, and there's a lot of work to be done in terms of leadership, but the real change and the real work begins with the woman herself. I think all of us have to start believing in ourselves a little more, you know, and I have that problem. I still do. There are times when I ask myself, who do you think you are? And, and we stop in the tracks right there, or we have other excuses like our, our responsibilities and we stop there. But I think if we have a support system of women who can pull each other up, it becomes so much easier. So I would uh, I would tell our women listeners, our female listeners, find a support network, find uh, individuals who are interested or who see um, the strengths in you and are willing to pull you up and you know keep encouraging you on your track. It becomes so much easier to do it. Wow, that's so important. And I I want to make sure that if there are people out there, and I know there are who want to follow up with you, who want to follow through to see the type of things that you are doing to be able to communicate with you or to find your podcast, please give us some good information on how they might do that. Yes, thank you. Um, listeners can find me on www.anusainan.com. That's my website. Uh, the, the podcast is linked right there and it has all my social media handles so you can follow me and also subscribe to my podcast. All right. And if they know someone who, if, if our listeners, uh, you just want people who are in the New York area to be on your podcast. Is that correct? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, the, the main focus of the podcast is heroes in New York, but from time to time we do focus on people in other parts of the world because, Hey, a good story is worth sharing. And mm-hmm. right there on my uh, website, there's a nominate a hero form under the contact tab. So you can go there, nominate anyone you think is a hero, and you can just give in a few details, contact number, et cetera, and I'll get in touch with them. Great, great. Fantastic. Anu, I want to thank you. And again, I, I always I appreciated you had such creativity during COVID when you when you reached out to me with your podcast and your your stories about. In fact, you can probably hear the horns in the background because I'm in New York, too. But um, <laughs> the, your, your stories were so are so heartwarming. And I, I wish you all the best as you go forward with your with your podcast and how do you see the podcast for you going forward is it something that you are hang, going be committed to for a long time or you haven't thought too far out of what, what's your thoughts about your podcast going forward in uh, in april of 2020 when i started it i had no clue how long or how far this was going to go but i'm so happy and proud to say we are in season two of heroes of new york right now and i hope to continue this for the foreseeable future wow that that's and, amazing. Yeah, thank you so much, Olda and Rochelle, for having me on the show. It's been an amazing pleasure. Well, you're very welcome, and we're thrilled to have you. I I I just think the world of you, and you have definitely given our audience members practical content that inspires, and and help to commit to elevating the next generation of women in leadership. I'm Rochelle Rice. I'm Valda Ford. And until next time, thank you. Goodbye.